but a lot of people like old school. Do you ever just miss the simplicity of retro technology? It's far too easy these days for anyone to just message anyone. I've been wondering about replacing YouTube comments section with a fax machine. More on why in a moment. But to be more specific, I want to actually track down the original fax machine that I had when I worked for the Blue Ribbon Soundworks, They're the Commodore Amiga music software company, back when I was 18 years old. And this is all part of my use it or lose it campaign. I made a video recently about why I'm getting rid of my smartphone, replacing it with a basic flip phone. Go for Perry. Oh, wrong number. Oh, okay. One that can still use modern cell towers. But back to facts, as you join me on this rather windy day, changes in the air, was it in my hair? See, in 2023, the UK government announced that they were going to remove legislation that requires companies to support fax machines. So what can we do about all this? Well, use it or lose it. But for this project in particular, I'm going to have to find out a way to still get an old fashioned copper wire telephone system installed for our fax machine. Now, the legislation story is a little different here in the USA and other countries. I was actually amazed to learn from many of the Patreons and YouTube channel members who helped to research this video that actually faxes are still relied upon by primarily doctors, but also a number of other industries. And the doctor thing really surprised me. You might think I'm talking crap. I promise this isn't a joke. But as part of setting up and preparing for this video, I set up an account with faxburner.com. They give you a temporary real phone number that can serve as a fax machine and you can use it to send or receive from other real fax machines. And almost the moment that I got my number set up, I received a fax from a doctor, here it is, and it was prescribing someone life support equipment. Again, I'm not making this up. I immediately emailed Faxburner. I said, please let the previous owner of this fax number know about this. And I asked Faxburner to confirm back to me. Never heard back from them. If you're watching this, I do hope that worked out for you. Come on, don't go so far next time. Come on, good girl. Now, before we embark, dog joke, on our adventure, we should probably explore the journey of the fax machine. Did you know that the fax was invented the same year that the first wagon crossed the Oregon Trail? Now, for over a decade, I used to use the service efax.com. And although this video isn't sponsored by them, with their help, let's take a look at the brief history of the fax. Invented back in 1843 by Alexander Bain, the electric printing telegraph was the world's first faxing device. Amazingly, it predated the telephone. In 1880, English inventor Shelford Bidwell invents the scanning phototelegraph machine, which is the first machine capable of scanning and sending a 2D image. In 1888, the tel-autograph was invented by Elisha Gray, which allowed users to send pictures of their signature over a long distance. In 1924, AT&T advanced fax technology further by faxing via wire transmission. And soon after, RCA successfully transmitted a wireless fax across the Atlantic Ocean. Over the years, fax transmission time has been reduced from an average of six minutes to an incredible one minute. In 1964, the first commercialized version of the modern day fax machine is introduced and patented by the Xerox Corporation using telephone transmission. In good old 1982, a fax machine would cost you just $20,000. In 1996, the first internet fax gets sent. And by 2010, all of that work seems to have become for nothing, with fax machines sadly becoming obsolete. Or are they? Well, that's the history of the fax, but I've never understood how faxes work. For one thing, I was never able to get my head around how it could actually roll up the piece of paper to actually manage to push it through the phone line. It still mystifies me to this day. There may be another explanation though. You see the image on the transmitting machine is broken down into a grid and it looks at each square on that grid, determines whether it's light or dark. Light squares are sent as zeros, dark squares are sent as ones. It's all sent with binary numbers. And it's sent as audio, which is that strange sound that you hear when someone sends you a fax. Those are just zeros and ones traveling very, very fast. What was it you were having fax to my house every 30 seconds? Well, I, I signed up for a food delivery service. So should I pick those up later? You can pick them up right now. In fact, up to 14,400 bits per second. Astonishing, I know. But get you. 
sugar that fast. Now, the inventor of the facts discovered that paper soaked in potassium ferrocyanide turns black when you pass electricity through it. And so, in the modern fax machine, the printhead or the laser moves left and right across the page, turning on the electricity for a one and turning it off for a zero. And so that grid is reproduced at the other end. And that actually offers one of the first benefits, which is fax machines never run out of ink, only paper. Unlike if you were to email a document to someone and then print it on your inkjet. But why are doctors and YouTubers with strange glasses bothering to keep the fax alive? Well, it's more secure than email. It's cheaper than subscribing to a really secure email service. It's simpler than scanning and then emailing and then printing something out. For example, a contract where you need a real signature. And it's honestly a pretty great backup platform if the internet were ever to go down. And likewise, it's also really useful for areas where perhaps there's no internet at all or just unreliable internet. But there are other cultural implications. For example, in Japan, they put a lot of weight and value into actual paper documents. So although I actually love email and use it all the time, I do equally, if not more, love the idea of getting a secure fax one-to-one -one from somebody's real phone number. Now, why would I want to replace the YouTube comment section with a fax machine? Well, obviously that was a bit of a tongue-in-cheek statement, but it is something I might do for occasional videos where the comment section kind of goes crazy. You see, this is a problem faced by all YouTubers, not just me by any means. And if I've ever liked or hearted one of your comments, please know this isn't aimed at you. But if I told you some of the comments we've received from violence directed at our dogs to death threats to sexual insults against my wife, trust me, you'd be out for blood. And with a new baby in the house, we just don't want that kind of energy. Reading that stuff can really change your brain wiring. And well, I've been reading it almost every day for five years, so uh, it can have an effect. Although luckily I'm still completely normal. <laughs> Come on, I get you. That's a pretty good illustration of how we want to run away from comments sometimes. You know, I'm a sensitive soul and you've heard the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, for me, it's more sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will also break my bones. Here, look, I'll prove it. Now people say, if you can't take the wind, get out of the hill. And if you can't take it, get off the internet. But I love making videos. So there it is. I'm not sure if I will turn off comments on this video, but if they are off, you'll know that it was done for a good reason. And in such case, I'm gonna put in the description of any such video, the fax number where you can comment on the video. It adds a barrier to entry, uh, it's access as a deterrent, and also sending any kind of abuse through the telephone system is a criminal offense and will be reported to the police. I think it's pretty fitting for a retro-based technology channel, and I hope you agree. What a good girl there. So with all that said, the next question is, what machine to get? Well, a while ago, I saw a picture of this brother, Fax 600, and I immediately thought I recognized it as being the one that I had when I worked for Blue Ribbon. I even included it when I did a video about the places that our retro computers used to live basically childhood bedroom setup recreations done using either computer graphics or just superimposed like this fax machine was here. And I was their sole UK technical support hotline when I was about 18. So you would be able to call into my bedroom. I had like a fax machine with telephone here. Yeah, I think the Tuesdays and Thursdays between 2.30 2 and 5.30 or something, you could call me up and ask questions. I, even, I remember some of the funny calls. We've got one guy... I was like, yeah, so just press the left mouse button. He would say, which one's the left mouse button? Uh, I suppose it depends which way you're holding it, doesn't it? And I would be able to help you out with uh, bars and pipes if you were using that, or Super Jam for the Commodore Amiga. Now the machine had two really cool features and it's why I wanted this particular one again, apart from just the nostalgia of recreating that past. First one was this toll saver. You could phone the machine to check for messages, but if there were messages, it would pick up after two rings. And if there weren't messages, it would pick up after six rings. So you could know if there were any messages without actually connecting the call. That seemed so clever to me at the time. The other one was this private ring. Basically, my friends had the same phone number, but if they dialed a star and then two numbers and then a hash, 
it would actually do this special ringing sound and I would know if it was my friends phoning me in my bedroom, basically. All paid for by Blue Ribbon. I used to love that and I've never seen anything like either of those two features on an answer phone or a telephone since. Now, of course, I could just buy a modern fax machine, maybe a brother one, just for old time's sake. They still sell them in the shops here and they have the good old phone jack at the back. So any regular fax phone line will work? Any phone line will work. I think it comes with one already, a cable for the fax line already in the box. How much has changed in those 40 years? It kind of blows my mind. Well, now to find one and their website actually highlights it as a key model. I think was the start of the really modern fax machines. Many years before that, I remember in my dad's home office, them having a much clunkier and boxier looking fax machine. Could have been a brother or a Samsung, I'm not sure. But uh, that was my introduction to faxes when I was about 12 years old, I think. I was able to find adverts in computer magazines and also in Argos showing the actual machine that we would have probably bought. But there's just nothing coming up on eBay or Craigslist, etc. So I reached out to the Brother Museum back in their home country of Japan and I was blown away. They were super helpful. They actually have a machine there. I asked them if I could possibly loan it or borrow it for this video because I couldn't find one on eBay or anything. And um, so far, no response to that, but they did actually find and scan the manual. Now I was talking to you about Blue Ribbon and something strange happened. I was looking through old faxes that I somehow magically kept on my Commodore Amiga hard disk. These are the actual documents that I was sending when I was 18 to the CEO of Blue Ribbon, Melissa. If you're out there, Melissa, hi. And it was so professional the way I would end the fax with, I'll fax with you soon, bye. Ah, uh, the mind of an 18 year old. Anyway, there I saw an Amstrad fax phone mentioned. I had no memory of this fax phone. I was sure I had the brother, but it did start me wondering, you know, I'd only thought it was the Brother Fax 600 because of that one photo I saw. But well, I delved deeper and then I came across this document. It seemed to confirm that actually I had a Samsung SF2500. Oh my gosh, I've been faxing up the wrong tree. Sorry, Brother Museum, <laughs> there's nothing to do with Brother. Because look at these two models, they look really similar. It's no wonder my 30 or 40 year old memories were slightly tricked when I did see that Fax 600. But here it is, we need to start our search all over again for Samsung this time. Now, as you might imagine, the Samsung Museum were slightly less helpful. They completely ignored me. Uh, I can't find one on eBay. I've been searching every single day in every country where they sold this machine and also all the other used goods websites. I think it's fair to say it became a bit of an obsession actually. And then one day I decided, why don't I just look for old closed listings on Google Images? A strange way to go around it, but it was one thing that I hadn't tried. And I found this. Now this looked to be years old and there's, there's no way he still had that machine or that I could contact him or that even if he did, he'd sell it to me, right? But I thought I'd give it a try and here's how it played out. Hi, do you still have the Samsung SF2500 fax machine? Yes, I have it. That's great news. Would you consider selling it? And do you know if it works? I had one back in 1994 and it's quite nostalgic to me. Sure, I can sell it for 15 euros. It is hard to put into words how excited and happy and relieved I was. And the guy came through. It's now out for shipping. But true to form, the US Postal Service arrived with the package, didn't ring the doorbell, left a undelivered note and drove off with it. Why do you do that, guys? Seriously, why do you do that? And although the color isn't right, I actually prefer it because it's the exact same model. It's what I wanted, but it looks a little bit more modern. So I could even think of it as a kind of upgrade and no yellowing. How about that? So while we wait for the US Postal Service to realize they are actually a delivery service, not a post-it note service, uh, we need to actually get that phone line installed. So when it arrives, we can plug it in and play. Now, we have a few old phone jacks in the house here, as we discovered when decorating recently. You can see Lady Fractic cleaning out her port here. It's the longest screw ever. But they're all long since defunct. And besides, I need the phone jack actually in the Retro Recipes studio, which is a little drive away, as you can see. So I decided to call Spectrum, who are one of the biggest telephone providers here in California. And this is how I thought it would go. Hello. 
Oh, hi, I need a phone line installed. You do? Yeah, I've got an SF2500. You have? Yeah, I got it from Germany. No kidding. I had one when I was 18. Uh-huh. Well, just uh, just give me the address. It's at the studio. Don't tell the post office. Yes, of course. Okay. Oh, they'll be totally discreet. Brilliant. Oh, by the way, I really like your hair. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. We got one! But this is how it actually went. Thank you. I finally upgraded my office to the latest technology, which means I just got a fax machine. So I need to get a phone line installed so that uh, I can join the space race and uh, get faxing. All right, I'd be glad to um, get you over to TV. No, it's not a television, it's a fax machine. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, phone repair. No, I don't need phone repair though, I need a new phone line. All right, and um, I misunderstood you. I thought you already had a landline and you want to add another line. Now 22 minutes into this. Um, Did you have a business account? No, I told you very clearly that I'm a new customer. What's so confusing? Have you never had a new customer before? They're acting like this has never happened in the history of their company. A new customer, this is unbelievable. We don't know what to do. <laughs> Ridiculous. It is $19.99 a month for okay. the landline. All right, is there okay. anything else I can assist you with before we end the call? Well, I don't know when it's being installed. So when, when do we get somebody here to install the phone jack? All you have to do is, um, do you have your phone? Oh, I have the handset, yes. Yeah, you plug it in the back of your modem. Interesting, okay. So it doesn't come through like a, a separate jack, a separate plug on the no. wall anymore. No. So you don't have a way to, to install a phone outlet? Give me just a few minutes. Sure, okay. sure. I'm going to get you over the phone repair. I had no idea that you can't actually have a phone jack on the wall. <laughs> the world has moved on since I was using phone lines. Because um, the order is in the process, um, I can't cancel it. I just want to be really clear. Uh, I just want to cancel the order that we made today, okay? It's not going to let us cancel it. You know, I can't cancel it, sir. I, I tried. That's why I had you on hold. I would give give a call back tomorrow. We have to get you up to a specialist. So thanks for your help and have a good day. You as well. Okay, Bye. thanks. Bye. Bloody useless. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Who are you going to call? Not Spectrum. So I tried again and I found that actually AT&T are the local company that still provides a copper wire service in this area. So it should be really simple to get that. It's not, it's not. They really make it difficult for you. It costs about four times the price uh, for my monthly service. It's gonna be approaching $150. They don't offer paperless. They don't offer online account management. You have to phone them. They're really making it difficult because they wanna phase it out. But I would ask you, you know, what would happen she had a power failure and an emergency. You wouldn't be able to use that VoIP modem and the local cell phone transmitter would probably be out as well. I really like the idea of just having a backup phone line. They operate on their own power and it will always be there in an emergency. And as if to help me illustrate for YouTube how difficult it is to get it installed, an inordinate number of trucks arrives on installation day, both at the bottom of the hill from the studio and the top, all to just try to run some copper wire to the building. For POTS lines, we don't really do that per se as much anymore as... You know what POTS is? That was, that was plain old telephone. Plain old telephone service. Plain old that's old like telephone. an acronym. Yeah, that's, what, that's what actually it stands for, yeah. We do 10 in a year, that would be a lot. Seriously. Because now everything's voice over IP. But a lot of people like old school. Because if your internet goes out, then your VoIP line goes out. Yeah. So this isn't affected by the power that, that I get. The central office has right. its own power. You just won't be able to send a fax because we won't have any power. That's true. And would you believe even I haven't seen this kind of wall connector before with this little spring down door? Very interesting. And now it's time to test for a data. It's going to take me a while to get used to a wired phone again. Try to plug that in to the socket that's on the wall over there. This socket right here? Yeah. Have you seen one of those before? No, but I can read that it says open and to rotate. 
Yeah, hi, the authorities. My husband thinks I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'll be here for him soon. Something just started ringing. But things are continuing to turn from dark to light because the fax machine has just arrived. Let's unbox it and test it out. <laughs> the Holy Grail. I have never seen one of those before, but that must be the German telephone plug. <laughs> I had thought about this and how we'd do this, but luckily it's got an RJ11 on the other end, so I can just get a replacement cable. Oh, there you are. Oh, wow, this is in great condition. Yeah, nine. Pick up this handset. Oh, it's exact. Yeah. Is our answer phone? Guess we can listen to his messages. Happy the same. Yeah, <laughs> that was complete muscle memory. Didn't even think about it. And it's got fax paper in there too. Good job, Mr. German man. Good job. We've got a 220 volt adapter because this requires 220 and the US mains voltage is only 110. So I'm going to plug the fax in and then we've got our phone line cord. Okay, the moment of truth. This has been a long time coming, hasn't it? That's the power up converter on now. Actually, I'm interested if we can just get a phone signal. All I have to do is pick up the handset, right? There's no, there's no cable. The old one uh, is all scraggly and tangled. I think we can afford to treat it to some new clothing. Okay, now we try and pick up the handset. Fingers crossed. Nothing. That could be because the power is off. Let's power it up. Making a weird sound. No dial tone. Where's that sound coming from? And this was never going to be simple, was it? Well, first things first, I at least want to get a dial tone. And looking at the wiring diagram for this German TAE connector shows us this, which has the same wires going into the fax as our new USA connector provides, with those inverted middle wires. So it should be working, unless I suppose Samsung use a proprietary wiring to kind of force us to buy their own cables. Well, to see if we can find one, let's time travel back a few years and ask Ashley Fractic. Oh, hey! Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm great. Good. Uh, quick question. I need a new phone cable for the Samsung SF2500 fax. Do you have those? No, we only have the inverted phone cables. Cool, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, well, it's worth a try. Well, there's only one way to really fix this now, and that is to try every combination. So I've set up this little experiment, and I'm going to start by touching those two inner wires to the two outer wires on the Samsung. <laughs> yes. yes, come on, we got lucky. So all we need to do now is solder them into position. But believe it or not, that's the easy bit. We've still got to fix the fax. And this has turned into a fax repair video. And there at last is its beautiful PCB. And it really reminds me of PCB Way. Way. Where you can get great quality PCBs just like this, starting from five bucks. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Perifaxtix Comment Beta, doesn't it? So here we've got our first batch of replacement parts and through the beauty of YouTube, you don't have to wait the several weeks it took me to acquire them.
replacing this cap with an audio grade capacitor. It's the only one I could find that is 3.3 microfarads and 400 volts, but in theory it should still work just the same. Somehow I missed that first time round, a blown resistor. It's hard to tell what colour the stripes are, but we'll just put 10 ohms in. Better than having 10 gnomes, I suppose. Now all these things were very unhappy in this circuit, and I'm guessing the culprit was this, which we replaced. And you can see the arrow points this way, which means the stripe on the diode also faces that way. Well, that's the power supply done, I think. And now we have our new battery for the main PCB. Uh, still not working. But wait, I found one final resistor that I'd missed. And it's again close to that huge capacitor that I suspected had been causing all of this. So with that replaced, let's put everything back together for the 17th time and try it again. <laughs> Holy crap, I fixed it. <sighs> Alright, calm down Perry, it powers on, but does it actually send and receive faxes? Well, I invited Patreons to send me a couple of tests, and I got dozens of them. Seriously, thank you guys. It's not often that your car sends you a fax. <laughs> That's brilliant. And with Patreons soon, will also be bonus material from this project, including the bookcase build that it's going to live on, and how Lady Fractic created this snazzy new label in English instead of German. Das ist gut, ja? Yes, and finally, the light side, we are back to fax. And better still, it's my original model teenage fax machine now working perfectly, which means you can send messages to it as well. And I've added the fax number to my website's contact page. And of course, I've updated my email signature as well. But I'll always put in the video description the fax number. And even if the comments are still on, by all means, send us a fax now. Send anything constructive or fun to this number. Plus one, seven, four, seven, Perry Fax. The best faxes will be read out and shown on air in our monthly episodes of The Retro Show. May the facts be with you. Well, until next time from both me and Puppy Fractic, here she is. May we wish you a very happy Faxmas. Subscribe and support below and cheerio. Come on then, let's go home. Check our faxes. One man can make a difference, Perry. Or one woman. Or dog. The Fractics. Lone curators in a vintage world. The world of retro recipes. <laughs> Cable.